Mr. Albus from the Conservative Party. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I want to thank all of our witnesses for being here today, particularly Ms. Skalt. Uh, your your uh, testimony today was very captivating. Uh, these are things that legislators need to hear because we have all these laws that we keep in place, but we don't always keep in mind the people that suffer uh, because of some of these acts. So I appreciate you being here today. Um, among other things, Bill C-54 would create a new scheme uh, for the court to designate certain not criminally responsible individuals as high-risk mentally disordered accused. Uh, this order would then be made on application by the Crown in cases in which mentally disordered individuals was found to have committed a serious personal injury offense. So when one of these designations is made by the court, provincial review boards would be required to order a custodial disposition with the condition that the order not be granted unescorted uh, passes, uh, or the person, pardon me, not be granted unescorted passes in the community. The existing mandatory review period of 12 months could, and I, uh, and I believe in the legislature says may, be extended by the review board up to 36 months for those designated at high risk um, MDA. Uh, first of all, Ms. Galt, I, I believe you already, you, you'd mentioned to Mr. Wilkes that you're in support of that. I'd also like Mr. Texier to be able to, uh, to uh, answer that. Sure. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, just as by way of introduction, I've been working with the family for about two and a half years. Uh, I saw this in the newspaper in my local community, and I volunteered my time, my company's time, to do government relations, public relations, and media relations because I just saw the travesty going on within the system. We've also worked to not only work on this part of the legislation, but we also have worked to correct some of the domestic violence uh, laws that are in British Columbia. In fact, we had the Premier, Christy Clark, present an uh, apology to the family last year and also to pr provide a report to ensure this doesn't happen again. So we're looking at all sides of the spectrum. With regards to the 36, up to 36 months, I can tell you I've seen the pain that this family goes through. The other thing this committee may or may not be aware of is that on a whim, the NCR accused can change the date of the hearing. So for example, in uh, April 2011, Mr. Schornborn set the date, wanted to change it, then did not show up for his own hearing. 2012, he decided he didn't want his date. And by the way, the family's been trying to move the date from the anniversary of the murders. They were told, no, the patient has to agree. He then, in March of 2012, wanted to move it to Christmas. We, of course, put up a fight. The Crown agreed. He moved it to November. In November, four days before the hearing, he decided he didn't feel like that date was a sufficient. So he moved it to Valentine's Day. That was convenient for the NCR accused. We then moved it, and this is the pain that the family goes through. If it was every three years, the family can heal. Every time we go between hearings, it's like an election. Once you win your election, you're gearing up for the next election. Once they finish a hearing, they're gearing up for the next hearing. There's no time to heal. Three years would give the accused an opportunity to get better and give the family an opportunity to heal as well. So, so your opinion right now is that the system actually allows the, uh, in this case, the person that's held not criminally responsible to actually uh, use the system in a way that re-victimizes the victims again and again? A abs absolutely it does. And in fact, the current system, when I hear from experts that, the, the, that this bill uh, stigmatizes mentally ill, I'm shocked. The current system stigmatizes the mentally ill because there's one classification, there's NCR. Whether you throw a brick through a window or you murder three defenseless children, you're NCR. This new legislation destigmatizes and says to everyone and reaffirms, mentally ill are not dangerous. NCR people are not dangerous. However, we need to get rid of the political correctness. There is a subsection of society that are dangerous. And this legislation acknowledges that and gives protection to society, gives a time to heal to victims, and allows the uh, NCR accused to get the help they want. So th up to 36 months is excellent. So the Crown would then therefore be making this application to have someone uh, given this designation of uh, high-risk mentally disordered accused. And uh, if I look at the, uh, the actual legislation under 672-64A, the court is satisfied that there is a substantial likelihood that the accused will use violence or that would endanger the life or safety of another person uh, it sounds very much what your, your cousin has gone through. And then B, of course, the court is of the opinion that acts that constitute the offense were of such brutal nature as to indicate a risk of grave physical or psychological harm to another person. Now, there's other factors that the court has to consider. But to me, it, it only makes sense that, uh, as Mr. Ba Dr. Bailey has mentioned, that these are a small amount of cases. But 
that the fact is is that the, that the crown would only seek it if it was in the public interest. Yes. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you very much. Thank you, this is for coming today. It's very difficult for everybody being on the same panel, and I really appreciate your, your contribution.